Hey, YouTube, PD back. Uh, I know I was celebrating my uh, sound of success, my millionth view. One million views on my channel, hooray! Oh, this is called Strongbow Cherry Blossom. It's a cider. I used to drink beer. I drank a lot of beer. And I had problems, health problems from that. I, um, beer and me don't mix. Uh, we do mix in the sense that I can drink a lot of it uh, in one sitting and not go get goofy from it. Uh, I enjoyed consuming cold beer. I used to mix uh, frozen orange juice concentrate and have something that's called a uh, brass monkey. You take that uh, can of frozen orange juice, pour it, you, you defrost that, and you pour that through a, uh, a strainer, a sieve, and get all the pulp out of it, and then you put what's left in a squeezy bottle. So then when you serve a beer, what you do, you keep a pint glass in the freezer, and you take that pint glass out of the freezer and pour about a tablespoon or two tablespoons of the frozen co uh, concentrated orange juice in, all around the side of the glass and then a squeeze of a lime in there and then you fill up uh, like a ice house was what I was using and uh, the citric acid slows you down so you're not chugging them and if you use a huggy on a cold glass they'll, it'll stay cold for a long time so you're not going to get all cockeyed and sideways because it's strong beer but that should ideally that would l limit your alcohol consumption you would drink it slow because it's got the citric acid from the orange juice and it tastes spectacular. Now they're starting to come around with that. There's a lot of fruity beers and stuff as uh, our society changes. Putting fruit in your beer is no more a sign, it, sign of symbol of uh, lo loss of masculinity or rampant homosexuality. It's just you like fruit taste in your drink. It's not, not a big gay thing. Uh, where a lot of guys were, looked at me funny for doing that. I, I don't put nothing in my, you know, my can of bush, go home and beat my wife, you know, for not changing the oil in my Harley that I never ride. But, yeah, uh, I don't drink beer. I haven't been drinking beer since 2016. Uh, I've had a few, you know. went to a bar. I had a couple beers there. My buddy Wally owns the bar, and I stopped in there to see him. So I don't really, I'm not a bar person. Uh, nothing good happens in those places, as a rule of thumb. But, uh, yeah, I've had a, I think we bought a 12-pack of some, uh, it's like a Shiner Bot or some kind of grapefruit ale that I bought. But mostly I'll have, I'll have a cider. Aldi's has it now, so... If I want something like that, I'll sip on one of these, and that's more than enough for me, so. Oh, here, honey, you got to try this. It's so good. Really good. I highly recommend that. So, earlier I was on here. I know I'm bombarding you guys with videos. Where did that thing go? Hey, honey, where'd that damn thing go? The thing you built? Yeah. That's why I'm making the video. I kind of can't cut because I open the, I open my magical treat beverage. So this earlier today I was on with this box and uh, and uh, the amplifier and then I, I went on to actually put it together. So I thought I would show you what I did today. Um, earlier in the video we just had this top panel on here and now I added the MP3 player, which is this unit here. You pop an SD card, a TF card, or it has a full-size USB in there. Uh, and that will play whatever you have in the car. Power switch for the EQ. And then we have an input here, an input there. The fuse for the uh, circuit on the power amp. Switch for the main power amp. So yeah, what you'll do, you'll turn on the main switch which runs to a battery pack which powers uh, it's 8.3 8 volts it powers this unit which is a 6 volt unit um, but you can run it I've run, run them on 12 without a problem um, 
the capacitors in here, there is some 10 volt capacitors, so running it on 12 probably wasn't smart, but we didn't blow anything, amazingly enough. Uh, this here, uh, MP3 decoder board is a 5 volt one, but it'll run on 8, it'll run on 12, no problem. Uh, so yeah, there's a single battery pack for that, and then to power the power amp, that's through this jack here. So you'll have an external couple of batteries, sealed lead acid cells, 212 volts equals 24 coming in here. Or this lithium ion just giant pack that I got from a, it came off of a electric bicycle. So it's a lithium ion power pack for an e-bike. And it sits uh, like on the, uh, if you had a, what do you call that, a, a, a rack on the back above the fender, you would have this horizontal rack that people use to a book rack or something it's got one of those and that's where this thing sits it's a pretty big it's a huge battery and I got it that's actually 48 volts it's got a power switch and there's some circuitry for charging and it's a real fancy thing it costs four hundred and fifty five dollars no I paid four ninety nine five dollars for it at a goodwill but that thing has a transformer that's rated at 10 or 15 watts, it's probably 10 watt, and that steps it down from 48 to 24 volts. So that battery is about, it's about this big, it's a big old thing, and then it's got the transformer bolted onto it with a cable coming off with a pigtail that's 2.1 mil, 5.5 outer diameter, which is what size this jack is. So you got a stereo input from the, coming from the my multi effector uh, guitar amp and cap sim simulator, and then my wife, same thing, her bass rig plugs in here, stereo, and then goes out to the subwoofer through this jack and then a right and left speaker through these because it's a 2.1 amp. You see how I scrawl over everything and ruin it with my horrible penmanship. So here's just the circuitry for the um, mixer part of it. And here's the power amp in here. Here's the remote on Velcro. Um, that goes up here. And we get to the and we get to the location that would go here, and then the little window for that is in here. So, as you can see, it's pretty neat wiring. Um, not very complicated. Just a couple of ins, couple of outs. I fused it. It's a five amp fuse over in here with the toggle switch that turns on the power unit and the. Um, the battery pack for the uh, that runs the mixer section on the MP3 runs these two 18650 rechargeable lithium ion cells. You can pull that out to replace those batteries. Um, I have this connector here for the input. You can use a uh, you can also use a uh, like a headphone jack, a 3.5 millimeter. But I went ahead and used the proper connector and soldered all the inputs onto what is the RCA catch bay on the top. I just went in through the bottom and soldered all the inputs to that. So the, these inputs here, these quarter inch stereo like guitar jack inputs, that's just RCA cable that I cut and soldered in going up onto uh, the circuit board for the input. So pretty much, uh, yeah, the speaker wire for the uh, everything coming out of it all these wires on the bottom here, the orange and yellow stuff, that's all from computer power supply. So I would snip that, strip a little bit at the end, put some flux on it, tin it, and then put that in the slot, crimp it down, run it to where it was supposed to go, cut it off, and then solder it in place. So it's the wiring's all pretty neat. There isn't much excess wiring. It's, it looks good. Like I said, we've got the, the, all the jacks around here wired in place. The power comes in off that 2.1 mil DC. The ground runs up to this fuse here. It's a, uh, I think it's a 5 amp fuse. I might have put a 4 or a 3, but I've got a baggie here full of replacement. There's two, two 2 amp fuses, two 3 amp, a 4, and two 5s, something like that. And there's two, four, six, seven, seven fuses in that bag for replacement. But we probably won't blow one because I think I put a 5 in here. But uh, yeah, oftentimes when I build these things, I never build them with the fuse in it because I might do some. It's just as a safety thing, I just don't do that. 
and then oftentimes when I I never remember that when I go to hook it up for the test I'm like yeah we're done let's test this thing out you know and I'll test it all up we turn it on and nothing happens and everyone you know me and my wife is usually there for the test and your heart just sinks it's like I forgot to put the fusion <laughs> and then there'll be much rejoicing so basically uh, the standoffs that are uh, on the, the main board the power amp board I, I used two of those here in the front the way it lined up it would have had to drill through the uh, aluminum rail which I did on one side and I just I didn't go through with that it's mounted in the front it's mounted here in the back and then it, uh, in the front the only thing holding on is the the, the, the knobs the fasteners wouldn't go because it was too thick the board was too thick and I didn't I didn't want to wrestle with it you know what it's good enough for rock and roll because this thing ain't, we're not going to be tour, touring the world with the Grateful Dead with this thing it's just going to be something my wife and I are going to be taking to the woods to use so it's an all-in-one unit um, utilizing I mean the whole idea behind this the whole reason this exists is because of uh, those Kempton speakers that I got they're, they're $1,500 set of speakers that I hooked those up to a Class D amp and an MP3 player and it blew my mind. I was like weeping. Music sounded so incredible. And uh, and then I put another Mother Goose album on. So, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I listened to my own stuff and it was like, wow, it sounds good. So, <laughs> getting those speakers and trying to figure out how I could put this together. And I had always wanted to try one of those 2.1 amps that runs the subwoofer. So, it's going to be those two. Um, do you want to bring me one of those? Would you mind? Those speakers? The real heavy? They're ma mahogany. The Canton speakers. And then uh, on the bottom for the subwoofer, we've got a Galeon Kruger or GK Neo 210. And that's an ultra light. Well, it's a really well designed uh, cabinet. So, yeah, this these are incredibly heavy. Uh, this is what's going to be running. They're eight-inch drivers, and it's mahogany cabinet, real thick, unbelievably heavy, like like really, really heavy. And this is a carat forty, four ohm, ninety watt, one hundred and thirty watt peak. So yeah, we're going to be running them at fifty per fifty watts. So I don't think I'm going to blow it. I I we we're not going to be cranking this up to ridiculous levels and we have a little hand cart we'll use a hand cart oh. so yeah these this get when I got these this was the reason that oh my god is that heavy this that obtaining those it was like um, are we gonna set these up in the house and use them as a plant stand because I can't listen to music I live in an apartment I have to have headphones if I'm gonna do that or are we gonna use them you know, and, and that means taking them out and jamming through them. And we tried out a test rig, and it sounded incredible. With the test rig, it sounded really, really good. Because I'm not playing my guitar through it. It's going through a amp and cabinet sim, which calls for a full-range speaker setup. And that's what that is. It's a really, really good full-range speaker. So you'll get to hear it. We'll be jamming this summer, uh, soon in the spring. We'll take that rig out and film it, and you'll get to hear, you know, will there be a difference between what you heard last year? Probably a bit. You probably will notice a bit better fidelity on it. Ooh, the sweet taste of success. I'm in a lot of pain. Today I got a, I got a package. And I wanted to talk to this before I got off the air here. Order fulfillment, pedalpcb.com from Leesburg, Georgia. I got this here package. And what was in it, you, you say? Well, it was an EPROM. EPROM. You say EPROM. EPROM. And an EPROM is a little four legged, eight legged, excuse me, depending on your perspective, chip. I got one here. This here is the EEPROM, the little EEPROM that couldn't, the little EEPROM that failed, that just said no. 
and this one uh, what pedal PCB I did a video about this guy he's it's a business where he sells PCBs to make guitar pedals and he's got some really advanced ones um, they use this funky uh, I forget what it's called this chip it's a big chip it's not a PT 2399 echo chip but this thing it's like a multi-effector chip and it's uh, so you can run you can build this pedal that's a multi-effector and it's got uh, eight different effects and eight different modes or he does custom EPROMs for it and in this case it's the kaleidoscope delay I've got two of the EPROM I got one pedal with two EPROM chips so I can switch, switch the chips out to change the function of the pedal and so the one pedal is a clone of the Keeley 30 MS the ADT automatic double tracking pedal that like was the Beatles used that effect actually John Lennon asked the engineer if they could build something to simulate the idea of recording a vocal two times and panning those hard and they built this thing called the automatic double tracker which this pedal simulates and has a couple other really cool modes so it's like a weird reverb funky chorus funky uh, flanger and it also does that double tracking there's all kinds of uh, there's three modes on it so the other pedal is called the kaleidoscope and that's a filtered delay it's uh, a really psychedelic sounding echo it's got these filters in it that you can adjust so that's what I was running I bought it because I wanted the ADT and uh, my wife ordered it for me it was a gift and I had sent her the wrong link because I was looking at all over this guy's website and I was like I want this thing and I sent her the wrong link because I had a bunch of windows open I was looking at the kaleidoscope and it turns out um, the kaleidoscope is really what I what I prefer versus the ADT so he was unbelievably cool not only did he send me uh, the ADT chip and he didn't charge me I told him what happened I said look my wife ordered this for my birthday and it's like ten bucks or something eight bucks maybe for the EPROM and uh, he just sent the, sent me it no charge which was really cool so I had it going and I was using that uh, pedal it's the only pedal I use because I've got this multi effector that I always talk about and this effect is so unique I was like it's got filter delays in it but they don't sound like anything like what this thing does it's really trippy and I wrote two pieces of music right away with it that are in our set that I never would have written if it wasn't for this great pedal so um, I was running it on a power pack of uh, 18650 batteries this thing with the batteries in it and then we I had forgot to unplug it and it drained overnight that happened two times and then maybe we switched to a uh, I think it was a Digitech power supply like the one they would give you to run off their little RP multi effector it's 9 volt 300 milliamp minus polarity you know and I, I, I ran it on that and uh, it started getting funky like it freaked out it wouldn't run in the one mode it would just oscillate if you turn the filter and then in the other mode it was fine but then all of a sudden it started uh, it, it would only work if you turned the t delay time to the bottom half the real short half and then the filter knob or the regeneration knob wasn't working at all so there was something funky with the feedback loop in this EPROM something funky with it failed I mean I had it in a in a holder in a holder so it was like a triple stack because I'm pulling these out and in and I didn't want to damage the actual chip pins but yeah it, it failed this EPROM is no good and I contacted him and he took care of it he sent me another one so this is pedal PCB a huge thank you to that guy uh, Robert I believe his name is unbelievable double thumbs up uh, I highly recommend if you're in if you buy pedal PCBs if you buy PCBs for pedals pedal PCBs the new guy in the block and he's making this super well he's new to me because I'm always six months back on any of the happening him stuff so don't take my word for it but yeah that guy is awesome thank you so much to that dude and definitely look into that place I will put the link in the description uh, we'll have some live music through this thing because it's 
200 Class D watts. <laughs> Probably not because I'm using an 8 on the speaker. It'll be lower. It'll be around 160 or something. That's what they would rate that at. Uh, I'm not going to argue with you about wattage. It's plenty loud, especially running at 24 volts. So you'll be able to hear videos of my wife and I in our duo. We got lots of new great music. We got two two sets of 20 songs, something like 38, because I think the one set's like 18 songs, and the other set is 20, and not really covers. I mean, there's I don't know. Do, do we do any covers? Yeah, there's a digital or not digital underground. Flying Underground cover, you probably never heard of it. And then there's one part of this song that kind of sounds like uh, this Molly Crew thing from the <laughs> first album. <laughs> that always gets stuck in my head. And of course, we stole that and did it in a not so Motley Crew, like it's not as much gain. And we don't have pentagrams painted all over our faces, and we're not pouring wax on each other when we play it. So, anyway. Not too many covers. Uh, interesting music that we're going to be making, and this this is it. This thing's the whole powers the whole band. This little box of fun that I built. So be sure to tune in for more of that insanity. I'm P. Two Finger, million view extravaganza. I'm gonna milk this for the next million views. I'm just gonna keep talking about drinking stuff. And, uh, I did it. I've arrived. So send your pay, send your payments and your checks and your. Uh, your used pets, especially black male cats, you can come and press the secret button and drop those off anytime. So you guys take care. Peace.